Hello everyone. Today we're going to take an adventure and it is going to be a great journey through the world of English prepositions. We're going to begin by going inside this lovely house. Now if we go inside our lovely house, we see a table and on this table there is a bowl and in that bowl there is a spoon. So on the table, in the bowl, there is a spoon. And now beside this we see some pencils and a ruler. So we can say that the ruler is between the pencils. Here are the pencils and here between them is the ruler. Now, if you'll kindly step back outside the house with me, we can see there is a man. And where is this man? He is behind the car. The man is behind the car. And over here, there is a flower in a plant pot. But where is the flower in relation to the house? The flower is in front of the house. So the man is behind the car. The flower is in front of the house. You can also say for another example, the car is in front of the man. The house is behind the flower. All right, so why don't we move on over on our journey? And here we can see a tree. Now, there is a woman reading a book. But where is she reading this book? She is reading the book under the tree. So she is under the tree reading a book. All right. And if we look well, up here, there is a bird. And what is the bird doing? The bird is flying. That's correct. But where is the bird flying? The bird is flying above the tree. Above the tree. So if you think about your kitchen, or maybe many kitchens depending on how your kitchen is set up, if you're washing your dishes in the sink, in a lot of kitchens you have cabinets above it. So you could say the cabinets are above the sink. Also, if you live on a building, in a building with multiple floors, like an apartment building, um, depending on what floor you on, you could have people above you or below you. Let's say, for example, that we are currently on the fourth floor. The floor below us is the third floor. Now we're back on the fourth floor. The floor above us is the fifth floor. That being said, there is a treasure here. Someone buried it deep underground. So where is that treasure, that treasure chest, in relation to the tree? If the bird is above the tree and he's flying above the tree, the treasure is below the tree. So while the woman is under the tree, the treasure who, is underground. It's below the tree. So if we keep looking on in our journey and we keep traveling, we come to a river. And here, if we look closely, is a bridge. So where is the bridge in relation to the river? The bridge 
is over the river. As you can see here, you have to walk over the bridge. So we say in English that the bridge is over the river. Now, if you look here in the distance, there is a school. And we can see in relations to the river, where is the school? We can say that the school is beyond the river. This might be a new one for you. Beyond simply means past or further than. So if you have maybe a hill or a mountain where you live, think about what is beyond that, what's beyond it. So here, the school is beyond the river. It's past that particular item, that particular thing. All right. Now, if we move up, you can see that we're at an intersection, at a crossroads, you might say. And there is an X here. And this is a corner. So, where is the X? Now, there are two common ways to say this. And depending whether you're using British English or North American English, um, you could either say, the X is on the corner, which is a little bit more North American, or the X is at the corner, which is a little bit more British. Either one of those is completely correct. All right, so we've covered quite a lot today in a few minutes. So why don't we take a look at them one more time so we can really think about it and understand prepositions in English. All right, now let's go back inside our house. Inside our house, there is a table. Where is the bowl? It's on the table. Where is the spoon in relations to the bowl? It's in the bowl. Now, on our table, we also have some pencils and a ruler. Where is the ruler? It is between the pencils. Now, let's step back outside of our house. Over here, there is a man. Where is he? He is behind the car. And if we come back over and we take a look here, there is a boy and a girl. We didn't talk about them earlier, but let's talk about that right now. Now, there are two ways you can talk about the boy and the girl. You can say the boy is next to the house. You can say, the girl is beside the boy. So, beside or next to means something like this picture shows. So, beside and next to are the same thing, meaning right beside something. So, either way you can say, the boy is next to the house. The boy is beside the house. The girl is next to the boy or the girl is beside the boy. So what are those again? The boy is either beside or next to the house. The girl is either beside or next to the boy. Now we keep on traveling like we did before and we come to a tree. And where is the woman in relation to the tree? She is under the tree. And we have a bird flying. And where is the bird flying? He is flying above the tree. And if we look down, buried underground, we'd have to dig it out. We have a treasure chest. So where is the treasure chest? It is below the tree. And if we keep going on our journey, we come to a river. And what is over the river? The bridge is over the river. 
All right. And then we look past the river. And what do we see? We see a school. And where is that school in relation to the river? That school is beyond the river, past the river, on the other side. Okay, now if you will come with me, we are going to one more place. And that is back to our intersection. Okay, up here there is a cross. X marks the spot. And where is it in relation to the corner? The cross is on the corner or the cross is at the corner. So on the corner or at the corner. All right, I hope that's helped you today understand um, maybe a little bit better how to use prepositions of place in English. That is all for today, so thank you very much and take care.